What's going on my kids today's each paper great tail box boxy come back at you with a brand new episode of the Sims 2 Mall 621 and in today's brand new episode we're finally going to be building the first shops it only took us six episodes to get here but we're finally going to be building that food court up in here and obviously the plans for the food court themselves they do change a little bit obviously because you know kind of focusing I wanted to focus on multiple signs at once initially but I'm like eh, I think it's a better idea if I just focus on one at a time that's probably the move to go for and eventually it did kind of take me a while but i did kind of figure out the sign so right now we got a dairy queen a taco bell we got a mcdonald's i i did leave out the panda express unfortunately usually i put one in there but i guess today i decided i felt like taco bell instead of um panda express in the food court and of course you can't have a mall food court without chick-fil-a out here because every single time i go to a shopping mall it doesn't matter where it is if it's south of a certain line which at this point, I'm convinced runs through my freaking house out here because literally every Chick-fil-A in a mall food court is to the immediate south of me. And there's not a single one north for some reason. But anyways, um, every single time I go to a mall south of where I am right now, geographically located, there's always a Chick-fil-A. The closest mall one is actually um, in a mall that's not too far away from me, right across um, US 31 in one of its various intersections with I-65 nearby. Some of which have interchanges, others don't, but that is a topic for a city building game, not really Sims 2 out here. So anyways, right about now, I've got a few other things going on, obviously. You know, you got um, the um, restaurant food. I, I think it's the food service tiles, I like to call it. You typically see a lot of white walls and red, you know, tiles and whatnot in um, restaurant kitchens out here. I would know from experience working in one. Obviously, I did make a community post talking about that in the past by the time you guys are seeing this. And I'm well aware some people are not going to be too happy with that post I made because um, it involves me choosing to do this over what, you know, they perceive to be a real job or something like that. Listen, I enjoy this a lot more and I actually don't appreciate attempts to scam me out of my hard work. I've already outlined it in, a, um, in that community post, so I'm not going to talk about it too much here. But yeah, I, I would rather like do this. I just love what I do here too much here. And I wouldn't give it up here to... Um, I wouldn't give it up to basically further the agenda that I was talking about previously. But anyways, right now we got the little Pizza Hut over here. We got the, um, what was it again? We got the, I'm trying to think right about now. Obviously, we got the little subway over here. And of course, you know I'm going to have to use the food weight counters. I'm trying to make this mall as nice and detailed as I possibly can. Obviously, there was a lot of stuff involving the um, subway over here and whatnot. There's some fridges over here in the food court and everything like that. Because obviously, you kind of can't have the, um... What was it again? You kind of can't have, like, walk-ins in a food court kitchen. At least as far as I know. I've never actually worked in a food court kitchen before. The Subway's got to have the toaster oven, too. Which is actually kind of hilarious. Like, you know, they were the one... They, I believe they introduced that in 2004. I know Quiznos, a competitor of Subway's, actually got, like, really big for, um... Toasting subs out here. Well, apparently, like, you know, Quiznos was, like, that easy to compete with out here, because the second Subway started offering the option to toast your subs, which I do every single time I go to Subway, just for the record. I will say this right here and now. By the way, Pizza Sub is still available, if you're wondering. It's just on that super annoying secret menu out here. But anyways, um, not the point out here, too. But, yeah, I feel like Subway really kind of put Quiznos under on that one. So, you're probably not going to see me build, like, a Quiznos anytime soon in Sims 2 as a result. So, if anyone requests that here, your request will probably be kicked down the burner. Technically, the same rules should have also applied with Friendlies and Sears, although those two places are more so nostalgic. Friendlies more so for my tales, obviously, but I know Sears is nostalgic for a lot of people. I mean, as I mentioned in a past episode, they had the literal, like, you know, infrastructure to kill Amazon out here. So... Yeah, unless it happens to be nostalgic to any degree or anything like that, I'm probably not going to build a failing or already failed business. I know one or two that I'm definitely going to touch are KB Toys and Toys R Us. I was about to say one, and I'm like, wait, those are two. They just happen to be owned by the same private equity firm, or at least I think they were. I know the same guy played a role in both of their eventual bankruptcies because, well, leverage buyouts out here. Those tend not to very those tend not to end very well. And actually while we're on the subject of leverage buyouts, there's actually a couple restaurants that I'm building literally right now in the food court that were also subject to the um LBO treatment. And that would be um what was it, Pizza Hut and Taco Bell, which I believe were LBO by um Yum Brands, another PE firm out here. Seriously, what is it with private equity firms and leverage buyouts? Surely they must realize that um, that doesn't really work as, that only works if you have like a real plan to actually turn the business around. I mean, for every, as I say about PE firms all the time, for every one Yahoo, 
there's always 30 Toys R Us's and 15 KB, or was it 15 Toys R Us's and 15, and I think it was 15 TRU's and 30 KB Toys. I think that was how the saying went here too, because, well, obviously what I'm saying is, a, what I'm talking about is a huge risk. I mean, you're basically buying a company on what is effectively a gigantic mortgage, and sometimes they even go into the billions. I, I don't know what anyone is thinking when half these deals go through, but I don't know, I'm not an expert in that sort of thing. And businesses have been turned around by it before. I mean, look at Yahoo going on its initial public offering. But anyways, we are completing the Dairy Queen out here. That is one brand in this food court that has not declined. I think there's only two that have not declined. And that's because um, neither of them have ever been bought out by PE firms. As a matter of fact, one of them, when their founder passed away, and I'll let you decide which one is which, but one of them, the founder actually put in the literal will when he passed away. He's like, listen, I don't want you selling out to anybody. Turns out that actually tends to be a pretty good longevity move out here, if you want my opinion. But anyways, right now we're currently working on the um, dining area of the food court. This absolutely looks beautiful out here. You got the dining area of the food court, so all the tables and everything like that are pretty much laid out perfectly. And another thing you might have noticed that I did was I actually divided the food court up into like different areas out here. So you got a bunch of different tables here and there, a bunch of two seat, I think it's two seat booths and four seat booths. So obviously some of them are going to look a little bit weird out here too. I did actually see two seat booths actually in a past restaurant I was in. I, I think it was on the way to one Illinois game. I stopped at a local diner in a town I used to visit pretty frequently as a kid actually. Tell you what, like that place has gone downhill. I'm not going to say the exact town by name unless anyone like, you know, really, really wants me to. But that town near um, Champaign out here has gone way downhill since that airport base, that Air Force base, I should say, closed. But the diner actually there seemed to be doing pretty good out here, too. Apparently, like, you know, one of the um, people in the party here actually knew the um, owner in the past, although he did sell it, but the diner was pretty good. I actually did like it here. I'm actually curious what their um, lunch specials are like. I don't know. I did like it, so maybe I'll stop by there again. I got a couple more chances, and then obviously, you know, you got, like, a basketball game. That's probably going to happen at some point, too. But anyways, right now we got a few other things going on right now. Um, right now we're building the um, garbage cans, and eventually I decided to take this little, like, you know, half wall approach here so I could create, like, sort of a custom table of sorts, which is a really challenging endeavor in Sims 2. And what I did was I basically made the um, condiment and the, well, not really condiment. Condiment displays are more in the restaurants themselves. But what I did was I put the um, napkin and straw dispensers in there, too. I don't know why they would, why did I not put that in the restaurants? I should have put the condiment dispensers there. Oh, well, too late now. I won't be recording here again for a hot minute. But anyways, right now, that's going to just about do it for this video. Because we are getting ready to come to the end of the actual recording itself. If you did go on to enjoy, you know what to do. You had a reminder three minutes in. Going to have another reminder coming up to the end screen. I will see you guys next time. Take care. Bye for now.